All right, guys, welcome back to this week's episode of the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. As always, stoked to be chatting to you guys again, and we're, we're very lucky this week. We've got a special guest all the way from Sydney, Hayden Quinn. Hayden, welcome to the show, mate. G'day, mate. How are you? And uh, hello to all your viewers slash listeners slash people all over the world, I'm guessing, and, people and everywhere. your fans in Melbourne down there. 100%, <laughs> mate. Yeah. Mate, stoked to have you on the show. Um, we had a chat about it a little while ago, so it's good to, to line something up here. And for those that are listening or watching, you may recognize his, his, his good-looking face or his voice um, from the third season of MasterChef, I believe it was. That's, that's where you yeah. first kind of come into the scene. Yep, 100%. Awesome. So for those that don't really know um, who you are or, or what you've done, um, or even those that kind of do recognize you from MasterChef, do you want to f- give us a bit of a fill-in and, um, on kind of what you've been up to, mate, and um, and a bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So I've got a bit of a crazy, long-winded story, but um, I, like you said, I, I live in Sydney. I grew up in um, on the northern beaches. I'm 31 years old, so I'm getting pretty old now. Well, I'm feeling like I'm getting old, much go. older than you, Dan. <laughs> Bit old, mate. <laughs> but um, mate, yeah, I, uh, you know, for me, I grew up as someone that one loved the ocean, two loved playing sport in a team environment, and three really loved eating and cooking. Um, and basically, these days, I get to combine all of those things, uh, which is very fortunate and very, very lucky. And I'm very grateful for. Um, as you said, I was on MasterChef way back in 2011. Um, which was, I guess, sort of like that big stepping stone and that sort of skyrocket into, I guess, public knowledge and and the public eye. Um, And from there, I just sort of capitalized on a whole heap of incredible opportunities and a whole heap of failures that that didn't go ahead but have led to other projects and other things that have, I guess, allowed me to do something that I basically love every single day. And that is, well, mainly the main thing is connect with people and encourage people to be the best person they can be, eat the best food they can be, uh, eat the f- best food they can eat, and um, have a good time along the way. So I, um, I do my food stuff through television, cookbooks. Um, I write a, a column for Delicious Magazine once a month in their Delicious on Sundays, which I know you've seen a few of those recipes and you like to give them a bit of a run every now and again, which is good to see. Yeah, mate, that is, they kind of bring me back down to earth after I've just posted a picture on my Instagram of you know, my chicken and potatoes and veggies. And then I see, yeah, one, of, but... see one of your recipes, mate, and I, I realize that mine's not so great. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a, a good team of um, food stylists and food photographers <laughs> that do all that sort of stuff. So, mate, <laughs> not everyone can have that at their disposal, but... um. Yeah, so I, def- I do all the food stuff. Uh, we've just launched a, a brand new show on Channel 9 called Family Food Fight, of which I'm yeah. uh, one of the hosts slash judges, um, which is a really cool concept. It's it's brand new format. It's something that's never been seen anywhere in the world. So we're really excited about that and um, pumped to uh, keep that ball rolling and hopefully do many more seasons in the future. Awesome. Um, yeah. On the flip side, sorry. So just before you keep going, um, this is we were just chatting about this before we started recording, yep. um, and we were, you were talking, you were mentioning kind of it, it may take a little while for people to kind of figure out what the whole concept is. It might be hard to explain yeah. it without being able to show people, but are you able to go into a bit of detail about what what the show involves? Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a tricky one, and yeah, like like we were talking about earlier, any sort of new television concept, there's a big sort of learning phase, and it's it's like anything, really. You know, going to the gym, surfing, riding, whatever it may be, it's a there's, there's a bit of a learning phase for the viewer because um, you're introducing a whole new story and a whole new, I guess, concept and format yeah. and a lot of characters. So what we've got is it's six families. Um, And there's four people in each family and basically the families cook off against each other in their little family kitchen um, in sort of a challenge environment. So like one day they might be cooking a massive family feast, the next they might get given a recipe where they've got to recreate that recipe. Um, The next day they're, you know, they're cooking, you know, in a food truck or they're at the footy and they've got to serve all the people at the footy or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a, a mixed bag, and and the characters are amazing. The food's incredible. Um, we got a great variety of cultural, uh, um, I guess, identities on the show. We got Lebanese, we've got Greek, we've got Italian, Vietnamese, two Aussie families. Well, they're all Aussie families, but like two classic sort of white Aussie families. But yeah, um, yeah so it's a lot of fun. Really, really fun. Unreal. And so you said the Master Chef was two thousand eleven. 
How yep. um, how long had you been kind of right into your cooking before then? Obviously, today we're going to touch on, on nutrition a fair bit. Um, yeah, so how, yeah. how early did you kind of get into that? So I sort of, my mum, when I was growing up, my mum was a, what they call a home economist. So she she taught people how to cook. She uh, worked at TAFE, so she'd t- teach cookery and, and home economics at TAFE. She's worked for the gas company, all these different places. She used to write for magazines and whatnot. Um, and basically grew up in a household that was surrounded by food and, and great food. And, you know, I was very fortunate in that instance. And basically just loved it, loved being in the kitchen with mum, loved learning. I've always been very curious to be able to do everything and do different things and try my hand at all sorts of stuff. And, yeah, the passion from food was was sort of instilled at a very young age, um, as was that sort of need to exercise and be outside mm. and, you know, train and keep fit and healthy and active. And I was talking to a guy the other day about this, and I think it's so important that we have those values and those sort of, I guess, habits instilled in us very early on, you yeah, know, yeah. especially – any parents out there that are that are listening or tuning in, then you know it's those little habits. Like when your kid sees you go to the gym or sees you go for a run or go play soccer with the group on a Wednesday night or whatever it is, it's like it, it ingrains in their mind. And mm-hmm. I remember vividly, you know, my dad training for triathlons, my dad at the footy field, you know, all that sort of stuff. And you just you want to be like that. And it was the same in the kitchen with my mum. You know, she she was always cooking, and I always wanted to help and always wanted to be there with her and. It's those skills and values and, and sort of habits that are ingrained in you for the rest of your life. Um, yeah, you do, so often, you do often see that with people that are, you know, especially high-level athletes or those, even just in general, those that are fit and healthy. Um, when you do talk to them about kind of how long they've been in that scene, it tends to be a lifelong yeah. thing and something that they've been brought up with, which is awesome. What You, yeah. said, you said before you, um, you love trying out different things in the kitchen. What, did you have any favorite dishes? Yeah, you know, favorite dishes for me. I'm really, I'm really. Well, at the moment, I'm really into like my Middle Eastern, Lebanese, more sort of vegetarian, sort of slanting food. Like okay. really upping the portions of veggies, mm. um, cutting down a bit more on the meat, uh, focusing on our fish. You know, things like that. Just to sort of, it just feels a bit better in the body. Yeah. Um, love a good steak. Like, don't get me wrong. Love a good steak. Could smash a burger <laughs> any time of the day. But um, <laughs> it's nice to, um, you know, it just feels good and you, you can smash a good volume and there's such a variety of different things you can eat when you look at vegetables and, and, and what you can do with them basically. So that's sort of like where I'm at at the moment. I'm very much someone that like goes in waves of, yeah. you know, different fads and things that I want to want to cook, you know, Mexican or Japanese or Italian or uh, all over the shop. Yeah, yeah, you brought up a good point there and those that are listening and watching will know that when I'm in a t- calorie deficit or even even normally, I love to smash a, a big volume of veggies because um, mm. like you said, you, you can do so many different things and you can also eat a lot of them um, mm. and there's yeah. such high volume and low calorie that they're just kind of, yeah. you're much better off instead of having something that's really calorie dense, you know, such as a yeah. steak or something like that where you're kind of smashing yeah. calories pretty quick. Exactly right. You know, it's, it's, it's just... Um, I feel it's like quite, quite cleansing as well. It's you know it's good for the body and the mind, mm. and you feel light. You can almost have a massive veg meal and then just go and train and do whatever you want, like straight after. Feel good. Gotta, yeah. be gotta be careful you don't poop yourself. That's the problem. <laughs> a lot of fiber. <laughs> yeah, guys, please don't try, try that at home. Um, I have that all the time, mate, especially <laughs> when I'm running. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, mate, so a lot of a lot of the listeners and viewers. Um, are obviously kind of into the health and fitness scene. Um, yep. So nutrition quite clearly plays a massive role. So for those that are cooking themselves at home and may not be, you know, at your level of uh, of, of chef or, or even just not that level where they're, they're kind of putting in a heap of effort with their cooking, what are some kind of tips and tricks that you can kind of give to us to add to meals to really spice it up and, and improve the taste and, and even, even the presentation, yep. mate, like just... Bits and bits and pieces yeah. that you can pick up along the way. Well, a couple of things, you know, a couple of words you just use then, like spice it up. It's it's as simple as having, you know, your pantry stocked with some really simple, easy to access, you know, flavoursome spices. Like a couple of my favourites. Well, I think this is everyone's favourite is chili flakes. Love yep. having some chili flakes on hand. Uh, cumin, coriander, fennel seeds. Love fennel seeds. Cardamom, um, ground ginger. 
you know, cinnamon, cinnamon's great for those sort of sweet or shakes or, you know, put it on top of your coffee or whatever it may be in the morning. Love it on the um, oats. Yeah, on your oats, yeah, yeah. 100%. And it, cinnamon's funny because it's one of those spices that somehow, it must be, I don't know, I'm not like a chemical scientist, but it adds a sweetness without adding any sweetness, you know what I mean? Yeah. It gives that sort of sweet, savory flavor, which yeah. is hard to describe, but, you know, people that have cinnamon with their oats or cinnamon in a biscuit or you know, put it in their nut bar or whatever it may be, it, it adds this sort of like fake feeling of it being sweet for some sweet, reason. Yeah, you yeah. Know I, mean? I know what you're trying to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely definitely the spices, you know, have a good cabinet, you know, get some jars, just fill them up with some good spices, throw them over some steak, chuck a little bit of cumin, coriander, salt on your sweet potato when you put it in the oven. Mm. Um, you know, it's really simple stuff. You know, just get some ideas of, you know, combinations of spices that work really well. Um, another one is uh, you, you said freshness. You know, it, for me, it's about good herbs. You know, good quality herbs: basil, coriander, parsley, chives, dill. And people are like, you know, oh, they're so expensive at the shop. They're so expensive. Like, well, you know, most people, and unless you're really, really not in a good spot, have some sunlight in their house or near their house or on their window or on their rooftop or in their garden or on their balcony. So. You know, we've got some, uh, where I live, just like straight up the top, we've got a, a rooftop little flower bed, um, yeah, cool. vegetable garden, sort of communal plot. And, you know, just having some herbs on hand, you know, your basils and all those soft herbs that are great for like throwing into salads or throwing on top of whatever it may be, really lift things up to a whole new level. It's really, really good. Awesome. Awesome. Um, you obviously do a fair bit of traveling um, with your kind of lifestyle at the moment. So how do you approach your nutrition when you're traveling? Like, do you get a chance to still cook a lot of your own meals? Or if you do eat out, what do you kind of opt for when, you, when you're when you looking for a good, healthy meal? Yeah, that's that's probably one of the things, Dan, I struggle with most is um, not only like the food consumption when I'm traveling, but just like that breaking of the schedule and yeah. like, like planning things and just, just sort of having a, a regime that sort of fits into a normal day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm someone that loves to be planned, organized, you know, today we were doing this call at three o'clock. I know that at 4.30 I'm going to leave, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to do my knee rehab, I'm going to come home. Like everything's like planned out. Yeah. Um, so when I travel, that sort of like scatters everywhere and I'm not someone that travels like once every six months. I'm like <laughs> on the plane every week. Um, yeah, at, so you're, at, you're at home every six months. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I feel like that sometimes. But, um, you know, I, I don't do too much like pre-prep. Like I don't – most of the flights I do are, are quite short flights. So I don't sort of prep any meals to take mm. on planes because they're just like an hour, an hour and a half. Um, if I am flying on a longer flight, I'm very fortunate. I generally fly business class. So the food on there is there's pretty good, um, yeah. especially if you, you – you know, I fly Qantas and do a lot of work with them. Um, and the food there is incredible. But – you know, I um I like to always have some snacks on me, cut down celery, cut down cucumbers, you know, whatever it may be, carrots, some hummus. My girlfriend Jax, she makes amazing hummus, so it's great to have that on hand. Um, I always have an emergency can of tuna, like ready to go <laughs> in case I'm starving. Um, and then I'm a big banana lover, so I um I always have a banana with me, and then. You know, again, I, I'm very fortunate. I, I fly so much that I get to go in the business lounge and, and there's always, you know, for breakfast there, they always have hard-boiled eggs. This mm. morning I had baked beans and a hard-boiled egg in the Qantas lounge. So, you know, I sort of cover it off like that. The hardest thing for me is because I work in an industry where it's all about food, it's all about entertainment, and it's all about wine. Yeah. Um, when you go away, you know, someone wants to take you to dinner, someone wants to get you booze, someone wants to, you know, show you the best place or show you the new burger bar or the beer yeah. brewery. So it's like, you know, and a lot of the time these are clients that are paying you to be there with them and it's sort of hard to be like, oh, look, you know, I'm, I can't do this. So I try to um, definitely keep things balanced. I definitely don't go too crazy because I know it just doesn't make me feel good and when you're doing it as frequently as I am, um, it's just not a healthy lifestyle choice. But, you know, last night I was in Adelaide and we went to an amazing place called Peel Street um, okay. and their food was perfect, exactly the sort of food that I would eat at home. Yeah. You know, it was packed full of veggies. It was heaps of spice, heaps of herbs, punchy flavor, small protein portions um, and really good biodynamic organic wine. So that that's like a great meal. You know, that's the sort of stuff I'd be eating at home um, yeah. anyway. 
So Perfect. it's about making those choices, you know, that you can control and things that you can't control, you just sort of got to go with it sometimes and enjoy it when you when you can. Definitely. Funny story, mate. I Last time I went to New Zealand, um, we went through customs and you got to obviously, you got to declare what the, what you've got with you yep. and you carry on. And I, I completely forgot that I had a, a supplement, like a pre-workout supplement. So I was already, they were already pretty, pretty um, suspicious. They'd already gone through my bag and found that. And then like, all right, there's nothing else. And I was like, no, nah, nothing else. And then they they go on through my bag and then they're like, all right, just come over this, come over this way, mate. And they um, they found my emergency can of tuna as well. I completely forgot that oh, I had it in there, man. Big trouble. Nearly didn't let me in right there. Those big Kiwi boys, as soon as they see an Aussie coming through, they're always all over it. Far out. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to have that emergency can of tuna, don't you, just in case. I've got them stack, stockpiled everywhere, in my car, in my office, in my backpack, in my gym bag. So easy. It's like, if the world ever ends, like me and you, we'll be sweet. We'll be right. We've got protein. <laughs> protein <laughs> everywhere. Enough to share around. You, yeah. um, you mentioned before, you know, obviously about the, the alcohol or even eating out and stuff like that, and that kind of leads us perfectly into the next question um, about training. So, obviously... Um, being so busy and and having meals like that quite often and, and enjoying a drink from time to time, you'd have to stay right on top of your your physical kind of ed, uh, physical fitness. How yep. do you go about that? Do you manage to get in a workout most days of the week, or what what type of training do you do? Yeah, at the moment, um, my focus is on sort of aerobic long endurance stuff. I'm um, I'm training for a race called the Coast to Coast in New Zealand. Cool. So basically, it's a run ride run paddle ride across new zealand for 300 kilometers so right. it's um it's a long <laughs> it's like probably 15 hours probably 16 hours worth of like constant work mm -hmm. um so yeah doing a lot of longer distance stuff but at the same time keeping up my strength and conditioning but um generally my like these last two days what i try to do is almost work when I know I'm going to be away, especially on a short trip like to Adelaide, it's like an overnight. Yeah. I sort of work on a little off phase, you know. If I know that I'm going to be away, I'll just like not train. I'll train that morning before I leave. Mm -hmm. Then I won't train that night and I won't train the next morning. Then I'll train this afternoon. So I'll just be like a little rest 24 hours. Yeah. Um, and then over the weekend, like I'll train on Sundays instead of like not doing a Sunday, you know, having a rest day. Like my rest day might be in the middle of the week. I just sort of got to be flexible with what yeah, sure. I'm doing and where I'm doing it. I'm also very fortunate that I work for myself um, like you do mm -hmm. and I can train at 4 in the morning or I can train at lunchtime or I can train at 10 o'clock at night um, just depending on my schedule um, and that's, that's a great thing. I mainly like to train. So at the moment I'm doing uh, Monday morning I ride in the altitude room so I, I use Altitude Australia in Brookvale here I got a buddy that owns that place and basically it's a big chamber that's set to about between three six and four thousand meters um, okay, yeah, cool. so I do spin sessions in there um, and then Monday afternoon I do my strength and conditioning at the cube gym which I own as well which is really awesome which we can talk about later we will, yeah. um, Tuesday morning swimming Tuesday afternoons running, Wednesday morning is paddling, kayak paddling, Wednesday are those strength and conditioning, Friday morning back in the altitude room, uh, Friday night strongman, which is tonight, so we'll go to the cube and do, um, well, I'll do my knee, knee rehabilitation stuff, then I'll do my strongman. Um, Saturday morning we normally do a long ride, so between anywhere between 60 and 100 kilometers. Um, and then rest of the day off on Saturday. And then Sunday, depending on what my week's looked at, if I've missed something, I'll fill it in on my Sunday. But that sort of varies with when I'm home and when I'm not home. But, yeah, a lot of, lot of swimming, a lot of riding, a lot of paddling, and a lot of, um, a lot of distance and a lot of long stuff. So yeah. slow. When is that event? February. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you, so you'll, you'll be able to come and get some training in with Klimi and myself for the 24-hour sled challenge then, mate. Oh, uh, what's this? Come and do a few lengths. We're on on from the eighth until the ninth of December. We're yeah. doing a twenty four hour sled push challenge for Beyond Blue. So, mate, Amazing. if you, if you're around if you're around Melbourne, you'll have to come down and get in some training. How good is that? That's awesome. Yeah, it should be unreal. I need to, so. uh, a little uh, my little calves would love that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've um, 
We, well, we should tell everyone when when we were actually filming Family Food Fight, I was fortunate to um, <laughs> go through a session with Dan and, and Nick down there at the um, was it the Melbourne Sports Centre. Yeah, yeah. And um, I couldn't walk for a couple of days afterwards. <laughs> just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a, quite a solid session. I thought I'd make a good first impression on. I'm pretty there and, um, and put him in a bit of pain over the next few days. <laughs> you sure did, mate. I look forward to uh, getting back down there with you again. But um, yeah, that's sort of my training regime. Um, I, I, one thing I did recently, I had a bit of a knee. I've got like a bit of ITB pain, meniscus impingement on my knee. Okay. And basically, I upped my load too quickly on mm. my running. So I went from doing like 20Ks a week, sort of straight into like 30Ks a week worth of running. Yeah, right. Um, and it's just too much load and not enough strength work on yeah. my um, lower limb stuff. So I've had to sort of incorporate a lot more lower limb exercises, a bit more rehabilitation just to re-strengthen that up before I sort of do a bit more of a gradual yeah, curve. Yeah, Mate, are you living on the foam roller or what? Living on the foam roller constantly. Yeah. Constantly, yeah. It's, awesome. my, it's my best friend. Especially like – because people probably – you know, people think, you know, you're cooking, you're doing this, you're in the gym, you're – but like 90% of my time sat at a desk writing recipes, you know, I, you know, like I said, I own a gym with two mates, I have a partnership and a wine label, I own a business with my sister, starting another business with a couple of mates, so it's a lot of like admin desk yeah. time, and as we all know, seating is like, Tight the hips. new like, yeah. it's killing us. Yeah, um, 100%. Especially when you're like training a lot, because it locks you up. <laughs> yeah, it just makes it worse, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does, <laughs> Um, but, um, so you mentioned the Cube Gym, so let's yeah, so, um, tell the listeners and the viewers a bit about that. Yeah, the Cube Gym, um, it's uh, an amazing space. I can't wait to host you up there, mate. It's, I can't uh, wait to you know, there. The gym's always yours whenever you're in town. But um, yeah, so we, we actually started the Cube about four years ago. Um, well, it's probably longer than that. Well, yeah, the first iteration of the Cube was called Backyard Fit because basically yeah, okay. we had we, yeah, we had a setup in my buddy or, and now business partner and, and gym manager, Lewis McLean's backyard where we had like monkey bars, chin-up bars, parallettes. We had weightlifting stations. We had benches. We had kettlebells. We had massive tires. And we'd, we'd get like 10 guys in the afternoon coming around and training, you know, just awesome. in the backyard. Like people How wouldn't pay. Lewis, Lewis was a, you know, personal trainer, accredited exercise physiologist. He's got his master's in fit, ex- exercise phys. You know, we just do these amazing workouts and it'd get to winter and it'd be like freezing cold. So everyone would drop off. Yeah. We thought if we can get like 50 bucks a week from everyone or, you know, even less, if we get more people, we can hire a space. We got the equipment and yeah, we went for it. We just found a, a warehouse, filled it up with all our equipment, built up from there. And within like two months, we had 80 members. Um, oh, and yeah. now it's sort of four years on, we've got... 180 members, um, we do 40 plus classes a week focused on group workouts, strength and conditioning, female only, boxing, yoga, um, weightlifting sessions, Olympic weightlifting, uh, plus we have all our clinical allied health practice, so we have exercise physiology, physiotherapy, massage, nutrition, um, and we're working on some Cairo stuff as well, so That's it's sort of a nice all-encompassing um, yeah, gym space. Yeah, awesome. So any of you that are in Sydney, go and go and go and give it a try. And if you're not in Sydney, check out their Instagram, and you can get extremely jealous of the um, of the photos they post of how good the gym yeah. looks. Come get involved, guys. We um we do a free week trial for any new members because we you know as you know Dan, it's and a lot of your your listeners and viewers would know it's it's very hard to pick a gym. You know, it's hard it to pick a place to train. You know, it's got to fit your lifestyle. It's got to fit your modality. It's got to fit you know, your personality and yeah, we're, we're happy for people to come do a week trial. If you like it, you know, sign up, get amongst it. If not, you know, there's so many gyms that we can point people in the right direction that fits their method or th- what they want to achieve from, from training. So yeah, it's great to be able to offer that. And that's the beauty of, I guess, a smaller boutique style um, gym that we own. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so for someone like myself who who is, is probably needs to improve their cooking a little bit and, and broaden <laughs> broaden the menu, uh, but also just improve on cooking and try out a few different things and get out of their comfort zone, what tips can you give or, or advice kind of to to really start to improve cooking skills? Yeah, I think um, I think one of the big things, 
and it sounds a bit like an obvious one, but it's like just find that inspiration and, and find what you like. You know, it's like if you said to me, oh, Hayden, we're going to do, you know, 100 sprints and I hate sprinting, I'm never going to go and do 100 sprints, yeah. am I? It's like if I say, Dan, mate, you've got to cook Japanese food and you fucking hate raw fish. <laughs> yeah. It's like there's no point. Yeah, so exactly. I, if you find yourself going out to dinner and you're like going to Mexican all the time because you love Mexican – then jump online, you know, go onto like the delicious website, Bon Appetit, Gourmet Traveler, Pinterest, Instagram, and just like get some inspiration. And then from there, find simple recipes, you know, trial and error, have a little bit of a play, see what works, see what doesn't work, find what's seasonal in your area, what's, you know, on sale in your grocer, in your supermarket, yeah. and utilize fresh ingredients and, and do stuff that you love. And you know, don't be afraid to give things a bit of a crack mm. because the worst that's going to happen is you're going to burn something or the missus or your husband's going to be like, yeah. <laughs> and just have another go. <laughs> I think food cooked with love is better than food cooked from some random guy in a restaurant, that's for sure. 100%. <laughs> but uh, yeah, inspiration, you know, find what you love, um, trial and error. And, and today, the, the beautiful thing about the world we live in, information is basically free. You know, yeah. you can... You can get online, you can jump on my website, then you've probably got recipes on your website. Yeah. There's so much stuff out there that people can access and just have a bit of fun with it. You know, do what you like, you know. Exactly. Enjoy yeah. it. And guys, I'll put a link down um, in the show notes of the podcast and in the, the show description of the YouTube video of Hayden's website. I might even, after the show, get a couple of other websites that you can recommend that I'll chuck in there as well. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, all right, mate, before we wrap things up, so we're obviously talking about Family Food Fight, awesome concept, and I'm sure the listening and viewers want to see more of you, mate. So what what um, night what night, and what channel is it on? Yeah, so we're um, Family Food Fight is on 7.30 Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. So four nights a week, which is really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, get there. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's very lighthearted. There's plenty of laughs and there's some amazing food. So some more inspiration for the the viewers and the listeners out there to uh, get cooking. Definitely, definitely. I know I'll be tuning in. And lastly, mate, I just want to say thanks, guys. I literally messaged Hayden yesterday, asked him if he'd jump on a <laughs> podcast with me sometime over the next few weeks, and he said, "Mate, let's do it tomorrow." <laughs> yeah, that's what like, it's all about. Perfect. It's all about it's get, all about get shit done. Get it done. <laughs> exactly right. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hayden, thanks for joining us, mate. Really do appreciate it. Um, Cheers, guys. Thanks, Dan. No worries, mate. Guys, if this is your first episode of the podcast that you've tuned into, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go and check out all of Hayden's stuff, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'll chat to you in next week's episode.